Thank you so much. Um, and uh, uh, very happy to be here this morning. And um, um, I will speak a bit about um, creating behavioral change, and uh, especially when it comes to sanitation practices. Um, at Peepoopo, we have uh, developed um, the Peepoo toilet and a set of implementation models. Uh, but in general, we always work with local implementing partners in, in very close cooperations. And of course, these things uh, tend to be uh, contextualized uh, depending on the countries and the communities. But in general, uh, we have models to, to, to work with. And um, uh, changing sanitation behavior is really one of uh, the key factors in order to have a successful people project. Uh, especially when it comes to our community programs where the people toilet is actually sold to the BOP market. So there is a big need to change people's behavior, but also to create demand for hygienic sanitation in these communities. Uh, so uh, I will not go specifically into how uh, the models work. Uh, more about that is in the conference handbook, uh, if you're interested in how it works, uh, but I will rather uh, bring up a case um, where we uh, have our largest project as of today and uh, how we've gotten there. And I got a very nice introduction from Timian because this project is actually in Kibera. So thank you for that, <laughs> well coordinated. Um, so. Uh, I'm sure you are quite familiar with the situation in Kibera. Um, we have a situation where about 50 to 90 percent have no access to, to adequate sanitation, and that figure is probably more close to 90 than 50. Uh, about one, uh, one, to f uh, one in five children do not see their fifth birthday, and uh, the most common practice is the flying toilet. Uh, which I'm sure you know of, but just for the record, it's when people uh, defecate in a simple polythene bag or a piece of paper and then just throw it outside. Um, we've worked uh, in Kibera since 2010 with uh, our implementing partner there. Um, and the people toilet is sold to the community members at a very low cost to be affordable. It is then collected and uh, the community members are offered a refund for, for the collected used people toilets. So today we have about 2,000 daily paying customers and about 18,000 children that are using the people toilet as their only sanitation option in, in school. Um, so uh, we have actually succeeded in changing uh, a few people's behavior here in Kibera. But it has not been uh, a very easy road and it's not been without bumps. Uh, we've learned a lot along the way. Um, and we actually started off with uh, handing out the people toilet for free to the community members because we thought that that would uh, you know, really uh, get people to understand why it was important to use sanitation. We thought it would actually create demand and create a willingness to pay for sanitation. Uh, but instead, the, actual, the opposite happened. Uh, people saw the initiative as w another NGO initiative in Kibera, and they were just demanding to get more things for free. So we had to step back, uh, rethink the strategy. And what we came down to is that what we really want here is to make sanitation aspirational. We want people to really want to have a hygienic sanitation solution. So instead of acting uh, as an aid program, uh, we started to do social marketing as a commercial company like Coca-Cola or Tupperware or Safaricom. Uh, that have been very successful in promoting their products to the very poor people and making their products very aspirational, even though some of them are not at all very good for people's health. So uh, we started to sell 
the pee pee toilet. Um, and directly, as we put a value on our product, the community did the same. And as we also put a value on the used toilets filled with excrements, so did the community. But in order to, um, to really, really reach out on a, on a larger basis in the community, um, we had to work on our communication. Um, this is how we generally uh, communicate the pee pee toilet. Um, it's a self-sanitizing toilet, meaning that it kills bacteria, viruses, parasites, and, and uh, hinders enteric disease to spread. It's biodegradable, so it's environmentally friendly, and it turns human waste into efficient fertilizer, which improves soil quality in the long term, and in, in that sense also contributes to food security. Um, and this is how we generally see our product and, and what we do. And of course, focusing on sanitation today, our biggest and, and most important goal is of course to improve people's health. However, we were quite sure that uh, this message would, was telling the, the full story of the product and why it was beneficial to the people. Um, and in theory, we were quite sure that uh, implementing the people toilet would have a, a positive impact on people's health. But to, um, to more scientifically prove that, we've been working with uh, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences to, to look at the health impacts in uh, Kibera specifically. And we've, we've gotten some really nice results. This is uh, one of the first studies in a series. Um, and here we've had families uh, with children in schools that have the people solution. Uh, uh, part of the study, we've had a control group and then the, the, the families with people. And what they experience is that they spend less money on medicine for sanitation related illnesses and they went less often to the doctors. Uh, children were less absent from school for related to sanitation related uh, illnesses. Uh, and children were less ill, and parents were more happy of the school sanitation. So we were, of course, really, really happy for these health impact results from, from the program. Um, however, quite early on in the progress of this project, uh, we realized that even though health impact was one of our main goals and also the main driver for many governments and authorities to actually invest in sanitation, the users might not actually see it the same way. And we felt quite quickly that these arguments were not enough for our customers and for the big crowd in the community to actually change their sanitation behavior. So, uh, parallel to this study, uh, SLU, together with the University of Nairobi, uh, started a study on the motivational factors for choosing the people's solution. And they turned out to be completely different. Um, the key motivational factors for the community members in Kibera to be choosing the people's solution was actually personal safety for having a household toilet. It was avoidance of discomfort with shared toilets. It was also cleanliness, which included um, reduction of bad odor and uh, flies. And it was convenience for children. So even though uh, our main goal was health impact, uh, improved health was uh, did not come until further down the line here, ranked like seven or something. So this made us think that if we really want to change people's behavior, this is what we need to address. And this is uh, what our solution actually need to address. Um, so uh, we uh, adapted our strategies uh, 
to create behavior change in Kibera. Um, and uh, these are the, a few of, the, of this, the activities that we work with in Kibera uh, to reach uh, the thousands of people living there and the thousands of children growing up there. Um, we work with, uh, or the, when I say we, I mainly mean the, our implementing organization uh, together with us. Um, we have a set of female micro-entrepreneurs in the community. Uh, and these women, they sell the toilet and we help them set up their own business uh, to make profit out of their sales. And we have female micro-entrepreneurs because women speak to women more easily and women very quickly catch on to the argument of personal safety. And having a toilet at home, uh, that they directly understand what it actually means to them and their family. Um, and also, if we get to the women, we get to the children. And since convenience for children was also such a high motivational factor for the families to actually choose another sanitation solution, is really a key factor to, to bring up when, when uh, introducing new sanitation solutions. Um, these female micro-entrepreneurs, they've been working in, in what we call plot, plot meetings or plot parties even. Uh, this is Anne, Anne Ndunga. Uh, she's born and raised in Kibera and she's been working as a salesperson for, for Pipu f since the beginning really, uh, 2010. And what you can see in this picture is one of these plot parties. And why this has proven to be quite efficient for her is because in Kibera, people live around small plots and everyone wants to have a clean plot. But for everyone uh, to agree on that, there needs to be some solution available. So when she gathers the whole plot, she gets them to agree and take responsibility for their environment together. Um, and in this sense, the, the neighbors can all help each other uh, to keep the plot clean. And because we also know that cleanliness is really an important thing for the urban poor. If you are dirty, that is much associate, associated with poverty. So people would like, they want to feel clean. And at these, testi uh, at these plot meetings, uh, the uh, the uh, sales uh, person is also bringing on other people customers as testimonials. And these uh, uh, customers, they a lot express uh, how people is clean, how it is single use and therefore always clean. It's never been used by anyone else. And these people, they uh, at these meetings, they have a, a sense of, of communicating um, cleanliness, that I am clean because I have a clean toilet. And that becomes aspirational to the people listening to this person. So it's become quite efficient to, to they see, see a person with status with clean, who's clean and, and people aspire to have the same solution. So that's also been proven to, to be quite efficient. And then we work a lot with schools. We work about with, with about 100 schools in Kibera, informal schools, all of them. Uh, and also here, we see that in the programs in the schools, the, the schools and adapt education on hygiene and sanitation and health. Uh, and we see that these kids, they're really, really good ambassadors because if you catch them early, they adopt these things so, so quickly and they actually bring this information back to their households, back to their families, to their siblings, and we see what we call the child to community process, where the children are actually educating uh, the community on these matters. And we see um, having these uh, uh, children actually growing up with a sense of hygiene and how it's linked to health. And uh, of course, if we, I want to create behavioral change long term. We find it uh, utterly important to be working with the children and catching the children from early age with these issues. 
So these are the, a few of the strategies that, um, that we have been using. Uh, and uh, so far it's, it's proven uh, quite successful. So um, that was that. And mainly our, our biggest learning point has been that if we want to create people's behaviors, we really need to find out what is motivational to them and not be focusing on what is motivational for us to be implementing this program or what is motivational for the government to be investing in this because that will not change behavior. We need to listen to the people and why they would want to change the, their behavior and then uh, focus on that. Thank you, that was it.